Studs and Duds is all about players that we think are going to exceed expectations and people that are going to disappoint on their projections. It's, it, it is players that we think are going to, oh my goodness, how are they projected 10 points? And whoa, why are they projected 15? There's no shot that happens. We just want to provide some players here for you guys and some, some, some people to think about whenever you are looking at your lineup. We've each got a stud. We've each got a dud. Wes, hit us. Oh, man, this is a mm. great moment. Wes, hit us with your stud for week one of the 2023 yeah. fantasy football season. My stud is going to be Michael Thomas of the New Orleans Saints. Can't guard Mike Slant boy Michael Thomas. So let's just kind of give a little, a little uh, idea of what worth feeling for week one there's no more data there's no more data to look into there's nothing else we can kind of glean in because it's a fresh new season we don't know if the lions are going to go undefeated we don't know if the chiefs are actually this bad we don't know so we're just kind of taking a shot looking at what we've learned and making a call of who we're excited about and these are players that obviously we've mentioned in some way in the past now, Noah, you've talked a lot about Michael Thomas being someone that you want in pretty much every single one of your leagues. I have grown into believing this as well. I've started to fall a little bit more for Michael Thomas. I'm starting to think that he is going to be very much involved in Derek Carr's New Orleans Saints offense, which is why I initially presented the headline when we we're looking at the training camp headlines is Chris Olave overpriced because Michael Thomas is going to be just as involved? Maybe Olave is still that second, third round pick that we all saw, but Michael Thomas, I really do feel, is going to be fused into this offense so well. He's projected around 13, 14 points. Of course, different sites have their own opinions, but I think that can be passed. If he gets one touchdown... He'll, he's good to go, I think. We know that if you, on top of your head, I'm kind of put you on the spot here a little bit. No, I didn't mean to. But do you remember generally what his pace was last year, Michael Thomas? What was he on pace to do last year? Oh, he was on, he was on pace. He was on pace for uh, it was around 900 yards. I don't recall the catches, but he had he had three touchdowns in three games and like two so games it, it was like or a, something it, yeah it was like three it was like a 900 yep. yard 17 touchdown pace right won't happen we will not get 17 touchdowns cut to sure. the end of the season when he is the offensive player of the year put um, that compilation together i would love that yeah. but that's that's the point that i'm making is that when he and and that was with you know, and yeah, Jameis was Jameis the starter week one. I, I should have he, he, counted he all this. He played with Jameis. Yeah, he was with Jameis. Okay, so Jameis is is good for for wide receivers in fantasy. So is Derek Carr, and I am buying into Michael Thomas as long as he's healthy. I think Thomas is going to be one of the best steals of the draft, and I'm very excited to see what they do. Not to mention they're playing the Titans who last episode I just predicted as one of the worst teams of the season. I think they're going to be so bad that Mike Vrabel is going to be on the hot seat may not even keep his job. Now, cut to the Titans just dominating 55 to nothing. But I think Michael Thomas is worth starting if you've got no one else that you feel good about for your flex and you have him. Michael Thomas, again, you've been listening to Fourth and Troll. Noah's been talking about him. I believe it too. He's my stud for week one. Yeah, I, lo I love it. I love Michael Thomas this week. I love Michael Thomas for this season. I think he will. Uh, I think he'll come out and do very well against this Titans defense. It's a young secondary. It's not very good, and I think, I think the Saints will probably have their way with the Titans. I, I, I think the Saints defense is severely overlooked, uh, and so I think that Michael Thomas is a great stud for Week One. Uh, you know, I can easily see him having a you know. A, a six for 80 and a touchdown week, which is, you know, that's a 20 point week. You know, I can definitely see that in week one. I think that's something that he can definitely do. And so I love Michael Thomas. I think it's a great stud for week one. And, uh, I think my stud for week one is just, uh, a, a special guy. It's just a special guy. <laughs> Wes, my stud, my stud for week one, 
I'm just going to jump into it here. It's Darren Waller. Darren Waller is a guy that I have on the 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 uh, frequency of him on my fantasy teams this year is quite high. He is a guy that I have been targeting in nearly every draft. Uh, Wes, in our last draft we did together, you were able to grab him before he got back to me, and I commended you for that because that is a fantastic pick. Darren Waller is going to be Thank extremely you. special this year, and especially in week one. Listen, the Giants take on the Cowboys on Sunday Night Football. The Cowboys have a good defense. The Cowboys got a good defense, but if Brian Dable wants to win this game or have a chance at it, he's going to need to get the ball to his playmakers. And Daniel Jones, believe it or not, is good at passing the football in between the numbers. Down the middle of the field, Daniel Jones is a good passer. We've all seen it, and uh, and, and I know his touchdown numbers don't reflect that from last year, but he is a good passer when he's passing down the middle of the field. Just to add on to it, too, is that, like, Darren Waller's a mismatch for even anybody, any of the linebackers on this Cowboys defense. Darren Waller is projected 10.4 fantasy points this week. He's blowing past it. I'm calling out for at least 15 fantasy points for Darren Waller this week. He is my week one stud. Listen, it may just be hopefulness, but I'm pretty sure it's not because Darren Waller is going to be absolutely special this year. Darren Waller, week one stud, 15-plus points. Book it. Book it. Oh, double book it. I I <laughs> love this as a stud so much. Um, ten points is is hilarious because that that is honestly so easy to surpass with a healthy Darren Waller. It's not like it's uh, I don't know why people I mean, I get that people are out on him because of the injury, but if you just paid attention at all to the Giants camp I love so much what you said about one of the beat writers where they like took Darren Waller out of a couple of drives to force Daniel Jones to throw it to someone else. Like Sunday night, Giants versus Cowboys is going to be such a Darren Waller show that I'm segueing into my dud, which is Saquon Barkley. And it's not so much that I am out on Saquon Barkley. I just think Darren Waller is going to make that big of an impression that Saquon is is not going to get the kind of PPR value that he has for the last several years when healthy. Darren Waller is going to be fantastic. He's going to be fantastic. I'm a little I will say I'm a little worried still about how this kind of contract dispute went with Barkley. Um I'm I'm a little worried that they drafted Jalen Hyatt. I don't th- I'm not worried about Jalen Hyatt as a player or as a fantasy prospect, but I think that there seems to be this general push for the passing game with Daniel Jones. We've been here on Fourth and Troll saying that Daniel Jones is not going to be a top ten passer, not even top fifteen. That's not what he's going to do. He made the top 10 last year because of his legs. That's going to transfer over to Saquon Barkley. He's going to try to prove a point. But for this week, you got to imagine that Brian Dable is going to want to play with his new toy, right? And he's going to kid on Christmas <laughs> like I've got on my wish list is Darren Waller. And I can yeah. see that they wrapped it poorly under the tree. I cannot wait to open it Sunday night and show it off to the Cowboys. Darren Waller's a stud. And Saquon Barkley is my dud. Really, because I just believe in Waller that much. Yeah, uh, mom, what is that six foot five present wrapped under the tree? What's <laughs> oh, uh, what's going on right yeah. now? What is happening? <laughs> it's just, oh, it's oh, it's Darren Waller. Uh, yeah, no, there you go. Oh. Yeah, Brian Dable. Um, listen, Saquon. Listen, he's got a chip on his shoulder, but this Cowboys defense is just very strong, and I think Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs. And these linebackers, and not to mention, uh, I believe, I believe, uh, I believe Stephon Gilmore is on the Cowboys now. Is that? I oh. believe that is the uh, case. You, you keep believe. talking. Let me. Let me I let me could fact be wrong. Um, but we all know the Cowboys' defense is very good, and I think this is going to be a very good, yeah, showing for them. But if Brian Abel wants an effective offense, he's going to have to get the ball down the field to Darren Waller. <sighs> I think Saquon, it's not of the realm of possibility that he could maybe score, but I think he's not going to reach his projection. So I'm, I'm in agreement with you there, Wes. I think Saquon is a fantastic uh, dud candidate. 
for for week one, Stephon Gilmore, Dallas Cowboys. He's a Dallas Cowboy as of this year. Well done. Okay. Nice job. Nice. Nailed it. Crushed it. Anyways, yeah. So those corners are killer as well, which just adds on to uh, maybe C.B. Lamb and Brandon Cooks don't have that great of a day. But uh, oh, wait. What am I saying? Uh, you silly guys. I C.B. Lamb and Brandon Cooks because those are the only notable wide receivers at the wide receiver position <laughs> playing this game. Right. Because <laughs> yeah. Who is it? Uh, maybe Jalen Hyatt and Sterling Shepard. Or well, uh, that's Darius one more point. Like, wh- one more point for why Waller is going to be such a stud. Yeah. I mean, there's no competition for the targets outside of Saquon yeah. Barkley, and I don't think they're going to try to target Saquon as much because my, that's Micah Parsons' job. Micah is yeah. going to be zoned in on Saquon, and Waller is going to be mismatched against everybody else. So that's our Sunday yeah. night stud and dud, and your final yeah. dud for this episode. Go yeah, on. listen, it's going to be <laughs> new Philadelphia Eagles running back DeAndre Swift. I'm, he's projected around 11 points. I'm not willing to roll out a running back who on the Eagles official depth chart, did you see this, is listed. No, tell me. The way they listed their running backs, it wasn't a certain depth chart. It was RB1. Kenneth Gainwell slash Rashad Penny slash DeAndre Swift slash Boston Scott. It was just all of them. Just all like RB1. Four guys. What? Right there. Uh, Nick Sirianni has has lost his mind, dude. I don't know what's going on there. But What in the world? This is just, this this may be the most clear, uh, you know, out front from the get go of someone going, yeah, this is a committee. And listen, as much as I love to hate on the New England Patriots, the defense is pretty good. The defense has historically been pretty good. I think they have taken a little bit of a step back here, but DeAndre Swift's game is really in the PPR game. I talked about it a little bit last week. I don't really buy in that he's going to be all that effective because he just isn't going to be in the same role that he was with the Lions. The Eagles don't pass the ball to the running backs very much. I know they might be switching up the scheme a little bit, but DeAndre Swift in week one against a really, really solid Patriots defense – I think they're going to look elsewhere. I think they're going to take advantage of a new rookie corner, and they're going to attack in the passing game to those downfield receivers. So uh, DeAndre Swift is a guy that I'm just saying, mm, no, I don't think he even hits projection. Let's let's take a step back here and let's just wait because it's, it's, it's too early to be confident rolling out DeAndre Swift. He's my week one dud. And maybe maybe for the season. Who knows? Whatever. I, it's, <laughs> mark my words. Don't, no, I'm just kidding. No, oh, oh. sacred, please. Too early. Don't joke Too like early that. There. Sacrilegious. DeAndre I will say Swift. that the only, the only way that DeAndre Swift uh, gets 11 points is if he has like eight catches for 30 yards. Right. Like, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be PPR, if, if anything. He's not going to get even. I wonder if DeAndre Swift will ever get more than 60 yards rushing. I don't know. Yeah. I would take the under on that. For the season. If anything, for <laughs> in all 17 games combined, three yards per game, Sam yeah. Laporta has more rushing yards than DeAndre Swift. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, no, Swift, I, I'm, I, I have a slightly more full glass on the optimism than you on DeAndre Swift. I'm willing to acknowledge that there's water in the glass. That's as far as I'll go. But... <laughs> It really, it, it's because of the PPR. It, it's yeah. it's because what we talked about last episode that they're going to try and design, they've designed offensive plays to give the ball, to throw the ball specifically to DeAndre Swift. Outside of that, if that does not happen, then it's, it's time to write off DeAndre Swift <laughs> as an NFL bust. I mean, it, it's going to be that kind of situation. Mm-hmm. Now, he could still win a Super Bowl. And then, and then he'll be very happy. But just a reminder that as good as the Patriots defense may be, it's Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown and Devonta 100%. Smith and Dallas Goddard. So yeah. I don't even know how many teams <laughs> you need to be need to be in your league for you to start DeAndre Swift. Yeah. But if there's any if there's any sign you were looking for and you clicked on this video or you're subscribed to us if you aren't please subscribe uh this is the sign not to start deandre swift 
Yeah, just just a forewarning of if you're thinking about rolling him out, I would say let's wait. I don't think it's going to be his week. Let's see how this backfield plays out. That's my thoughts. Eagles are going to be a fun team to watch for the backfield purposes to see how this backfield plays out. So-